What the TL is about is striking design, modern day user interface, which is unlike anything. It's more smartphone, and God knows this world, everybody has a freaking smartphone and know how to use it. Hey, 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 everyone. This is Steve Huff from stevehuffphoto.com. It's been busy as always, but hey, I'm here again with another YouTube video. And this time, I want to give you my first impressions and first look at the Leica TL2. Beautiful camera. Uh, even if you don't agree with what it's about, it is a beautiful camera. Now, here it is in silver. Okay, you can get a look at it. You still have the same body style as the TL before it and the T before that. This is the TL2. I might have said T in the intro. This is the Leica TL2, the new improved modern day version of the T. Here it is in black. Look at this, how do I have two of these and it's not even shipped yet? Well, that's because Leica was nice enough to send me a black and silver. Uh, taking a look at both, been using them, uh, and you know, let me talk a little bit about Leica first in general. And possibly when I talk here, I'll have some images that I've so far taken. Now, I've only had these for mere days um, and have not been out to do serious shooting. So I, when I do my reviews, it's more about a real world approach as it has been for nearly 10 years now. Uh, so I take the camera, I go out and use it as I would uh, if I were not reviewing a camera. Uh, I look at reviews as uh, like a user would. So if I didn't have my website or this channel or I didn't talk about cameras, I'd buy a camera like this and I'd go use it and after a couple weeks I'd make up my mind whether I liked it, hated it, or loved it. Um, and it would all be based on doing what it was built to do. Taking photos, giving us the quality we desire, giving us the versatility we want. So where does the Leica TL2 fit into all this? Well, when the Leica T was announced about three years ago, I reviewed it. Debbie and I drove up to Oatman, Arizona. I remember it well because it was a four and a half hour drive. We get there and the whole town was like a block long. And I was like, we drove four and a half hours for this to see some burrows in the street and feed them. It was still a cool day, cool experience. And I used the Leica T there to get some really cool shots and it showed the color, the contrast, the pop, the bite that is usually associated with great Leica cameras like the Leica Q, the Leica M10, the Leica SL. Leica does make some beautiful, functional, gorgeous, gorgeous, drool-worthy, lust-worthy cameras. I've owned most of them at one time in life uh, and I always come back to Leica. Now I'm filming this with a Sony A9 and 28mm f2 lens. But I use this Sony, I'd say 80% for my video work that I do outside of this. And I use other cameras and the A9 for my photo work. I use both. Um, the A9 is so fast and so responsive. So when you're going to something even brand new like a Leica TL2, this is not going to feel anywhere near as fast or speedy as a Sony A9 when taking photos. But this is a $1,950 body. The Sony is a $4,500 professional body built for speed and all things that come with it. So I have to look at this not from a perspective of versus the A9 because the A9 is a totally different camera. So you have to look at a TL2, I almost said T again, as something different, something unique, something beautiful, a work of art. Uh, it's still hand carved, they still do the hand polishing. Um, basically what Leica has done, here's the look at the menu as you can see. What Leica has done here is basically update everything, the sensor, the processor, um, the autofocus speed, the high ISO capabilities, um, and they've improved it to the modern day because the original T, if you use it today, it's going to feel really slow, sluggish, and laggy compared to what's out there. So the Leica TL2 is made in Germany from Leica camera. It's very slim. I mean, you can see, I'll go this way, and I'll pop out the battery. So the battery pops out of the bottom like so, and you have this small battery. It snaps in kind of like it does on the SL, which is nice. I like that. The camera is very slim. When you hold it, it fits in my smaller hands really well. 
Um, the one thing I can tell you right now that I criticized in my original tea review three years ago, and this was three years ago, I, I said, why doesn't this have an EVF built in when all cameras at the time were going to built in EVFs? And that was one of the negatives and the cons. But overall, I enjoyed it at the time three years ago for the lovely image quality and unique interface. This is a, a, a I almost said a phone. This is a camera for those who are so used and so trained with their fingers to using a phone for moving around um, and taking photos or menu diving, what have you. Uh, this feels like an Apple product uh, to me. This is what Apple would create if they created a camera. And it's interesting because I would believe in a nanosecond that if Leica said, oh, Apple teamed up with us to design the T or TL2, I'd believe it. That's how much, that's how Apple-like it is. And I love Apple. I use all Apple computers, iPhone. I also have Android devices and Windows devices. Um, but think first and foremost, the TL2 is not like any other camera. You're not going to have your traditional buttons and controls. There's none of that uh, tactile feel because everything is touch. The entire back of the camera is touch screen. Uh, there's no physical buttons. On the top you have your two dials that control various functions. You have your on and off, your shutter button, and one button uh, that's a video button or you can program it to playback images at a touch of a button or you can program it to turn on the EVF at the touch of a button if you don't like the auto sensor being used. So the TL2 is quite different. If you're coming from a Nikon D500 or a Canon 5D or even a Sony A7, um, think about before you look into a TL2, be prepared for a total different interface and usability. Um, with that said, it's very unique, it's very cool, it's very modern. The design is gorgeous and the output is beautiful. Now housing a 24 megapixel sensor versus a 16, having a boatload of autofocus points compared to the old version. Uh, eight time faster touch response over the previous generation. That's pretty fast, but the old one was kind of laggy. This one's smooth as silk. You have um, that ISO capability now up to 50,000 instead of 12,500 of the older model. So the TL2 is more capable. I'm not sure what sensor is in it. It could be the M10 sensor. It could be the SL sensor. They could all be one in the same. Like is a little mysterious when it comes to the sensor, but I believe it's unique to Leica. It's not a Sony uh, a sensor from what I understand. Um, now in the M240, Leica used uh, a CMOSIS sensor. Some people complained about it. I loved it. I think it's a beautiful sensor in that M240. I still love the M240 actually. Um, I have nothing against it. I feel it was one of their best digital M's ever, even taking the M10, and M10 into account. Um, but the TL2 is a little different. I thought that Leica was going to phase out the TL system because I don't see many people using it. I can't imagine it's selling very well. But then again, it's like that with the M. You don't see many around, but there's that diehard, passionate group who use those M's, meet up with other people, and go on trips just using their M cameras. Same goes for the SL system and the S system. There's probably people out there that really enjoy this interface and this design and this unique approach to taking photos. My biggest complaint with the TL2, now this is only my first thought, it's not a review. I will have a review in a couple weeks at stevehuffphoto.com. I posted a first look there with some image samples and thoughts, um, but I do not like that it requires this external EVF. I've been a big guy, a big big on that. I've been big on that over the years saying put those EVFs in the camera and today almost every camera made and released has a built-in EVF. Look at the Fuji X100, the Fuji X-T2, the Fuji X-Pro, uh, look at the Sony series all built in now. Um, you know I can't think of any modern day cameras made today that are high-end that don't have a built-in EVF of some sort. So I feel that the Leica TL2 I wish they would have redesigned a little bit and put that EVF in there. And I've even said if they've released a TL style body with a built in 23 f2 lens, which would give us a 35 millimeter equivalent, uh, and it had a built in EVF and it was $2,000, 
it would be an X100 killer. But the way this is now, the body's 1950, the EVF is five or 600, the lenses range anywhere from 1500 and up. Um, the 35 Sumalux on here now, which is the best TL lens in my opinion, I think it's 2500. So you're looking at about five grand for this setup right here. And the problem many people have is for five grand, you can get so many other cameras that you know deliver maybe more speed, more functionality, more versatility. You're not gonna get the same IQ signature because this has the IQ signature of the Q and the M10 uh, from what I'm seeing and also the previous T and TL. So if you're all about IQ, if you love Leica and you wanna get into a real German made Leica, this is your only bet really. Um, you're gonna get that famous Leica color and pop and snap and it is there, it's not an imaginary thing. Some people fail to understand that there is something about a Leica quality but you have to pay for that. So are you willing to spend five grand on this modern day, uh, beautiful designed camera um, with, a, with the best lens? Now you don't have to get the best lens. You can spend four grand and get the 23 F2 Summicron, which is also much smaller and much more manageable and faster in autofocus. One thing I wanna also talk about uh, I've noticed in low light, this thing hunts for autofocus. Well. I wouldn't say hunt, but it doesn't lock on. Uh, I was trying to take a picture of Debbie in a restaurant during midday, which I do many times with many cameras, and this is maybe one of only two times I remember where it wouldn't lock on. It would just bring me that red square, and it took me six tries to get it to lock on to near her eye, and I took the picture, and then um, it, it came out fine. But also another quirk I noticed with this is when you're taking photos, what you see in the viewfinder, I'm like, ooh, that looks really nice. It's not what you get in the final image. The final image looks brighter, like it's almost overexposing it. I'm not sure what's going on with that. But uh, the T has, TL2 has come a long way from the T. It's everything the T was and a load more. You're gaining speed, you're gaining response, usability's better, the menus are worked out a little differently and better. Um, no more pop-up built-in flash. They took that out to save room on the inside. You have a better sensor, much better high ISO capabilities. Uh, I shot a picture of Debbie. She was almost in like this little cave and it was dark. So it shot it at 10,000 ISO and brightened it up and looks great. Um, so you can work in low light with the T. The problem will be just the focus. You could shoot M lenses with the M adapter, which is how I enjoyed shooting the original T. The original T with a 50 Summicron F2, the original version was beautiful, beautiful. So if I were to buy a TL2, I'd probably still use it with M lenses. I'd buy something maybe like a Zeiss 50 F2 planner if I wanted to save money, or the old original like a Summicron used because you can get those for $1,200. Uh, if you wanna go all out and go gangbusters, you can get the 50 APO for $7,000. Um, but I don't know of anyone who would buy this to, to pair with that lens. If you're paying that much, go with the M10 or SL. So I'm still using the TL2. I love the image quality. It's not perfect. If you compare it to some of the faster cameras of today, uh, like the A9, you can't really do that, but the A9 is more than twice as much. If you compare it to something like a Fuji X-T2, uh, this is much different in design, much smaller. Uh, and it has its own kind of mojo going on. To tell you the truth, uh, I'm gonna be reviewing this in about a week and a half. I'm going to be using it uh, more, hopefully going to San Diego next week with it, and I'll see what happens. Uh, maybe it'll grow on me and I'll wanna buy one, and maybe I'll say, well, it's amazing in IQ, but I already have other cameras uh, that fulfill my other needs. I don't know yet. I do know that uh, I applaud Leica for improving this, and doing firmware updates on the older versions and um, you know releasing another beautiful camera. Um, face it, it, it depends on you and your tastes. If you like Leica, if you have the bank account, you can buy a camera like this and be happy with it and the image quality will be second to none. Uh, you know, then there's people who'll say, well I'll buy a Fuji or I'll buy a Sony or I'll buy an Olympus um, and in my review, I'll have some uh, side-by-sides with an Olympus EM1 Mark II and even the Sony A9, whatever I have around on hand. 
But the point is it's not about those comparisons with the TL. What the TL is about is striking design, modern day user interface, which is unlike anything. It's more smartphone and God knows this world, everybody has a freaking smartphone and know how to use it. So Leica might be uh, pursuing the right path here. I don't know. Um, so far in my first looks, the only things I don't like is that the EVF is still an external piece. Um, and uh, the AF in low light is not really uh, that great with the 3514. Now with the 35 or 23 F2 Summicron, it's much quicker. So I guess it's lens dependent as well. So look for my full review at stephuffphoto.com over the next two weeks. I'll be using these more and more. And there's one thing you cannot deny about the Leica T system in general from the T to the TL to the TL2, and that is beautiful, beautiful image quality. Um, you're getting that Leica look for the, uh, with a made in Germany camera for the least amount of money for a Leica made in Germany camera. Uh, with the M10 at 7, 8,000, the SL at 6,000. This at 1950 seems like a bargain for a true bona fide made in Germany Leica. And you're getting that Leica IQ, which to some is the ultimate importance and all it comes down to. So look for my full review. Thank you for watching. This is Steve and I'll see you next time. Bye.